This month, we're going to um, talk about Matthew 25 and um, think about the resources and the ministries and the training opportunities and the things that we have co to connect you to that initiative from the Presbyterian Mission Agency. But we'll also take some time to uh, if you have any other questions, things that you're working on, um, things that you'd like to ask your faith formation um, leader colleagues about, we'll take some time for that as well. So welcome and thank you for being here. Um, I'm zooming in from Colorado. Janet's zooming in from Texas. And um, looks like we've got Ohio and Maryland and um Alicia's here, Alicia's from here from Louisville, and we've got Springfield, Missouri. So um, thanks all for being here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start us off uh, with a question and you're free to use the chat or unmute because um, I wanna just make sure that we're using this time wisely for those of you that have come. So um, Matthew 25 is the initiative um, from the Presbyterian Mission Agency brought forth by the General Assembly. We have our three um, foci areas of congregational vitality, dismantling structural racism, alleviating poverty, and then we have our intersectional priorities as well now, which are um, climate change, gender justice and heteropatriarchy and militaris, militarism. So um, those are intersexual priorities because we know that, um, for instance, things like there can be climate change and that does relate to, um, you know, dismantling structural racism. Um, so those things intersect with one another. So what I'd like to start us off with is just Take a moment either to introduce yourself in the chat if you haven't already, and let us know where you're at with this initiative. This is something that your presbytery, your church is just beginning to explore. You're fully entrenched in it and you're looking for specific things, or um, you didn't really remember that's what we were talking about today and here you are. <laughs> Whatever that may be, um, where are you at with this initiative um, and this topic so that we can make sure that we talk to y'all about what you're looking for? Um, would anybody be willing to start us off? And like I said, you you feel free to use the chat also for that. But if you're willing to start us off, go ahead and unmute. And maybe Alicia, you could just introduce yourself real quick to the group. And say hello sure. while people are thinking hello. about that. Hello, everyone. I am Alicia DeMarcher Presley. I work for theology and worship, um, also in the area of theology formation and evangelism with Stephanie and Janet. I currently am facilitating a couple of co continued conversation cohorts, so where people are just deepening in conversation about Matthew 25. The ones that are currently going on are the two foci of eradicating poverty and the vital congregations. So it's not the initiative, but we're having conversations about what it means to be vital and, and where we are. Um, and I'll make sure you all have more information about that. But that, And I'm also working, planning the Matthew 25 summit that's upcoming in January. So I feel like I'm maybe wrist elbow deep in Matthew 25 right now. Awesome. Thanks, Alicia. And I think... Uh, is it Sharice? Sharice? Yes, it is Sharice. Uh, you, had, you had unmuted, so are you? Yeah, hi you like everybody. Um, I unmuted because I'm excited because I just got off our presbytery meeting here in Baltimore and um, we voted for the presbytery to become a Matthew 25 presbytery. So um, that's something that I co-chair our Dismantling Racism team for the Presbytery and am on PMA board. So I am supposed to be an ambassador for Matthew 25. So I would say I'm about elbow deep in it as well. But um, really, so I found out about these meetings as I do on the um, PCUSA website 
looking for something else. I always say, you know, it's the Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get when you go there. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I often go looking for one thing and find something else. But um, yeah, I'm very excited about that and have a group of folks going to the summit and just wanted to see what was going to be said here and particularly want to, we have 17 of our individual congregations that were already Matthew 25, but the presbytery is not. So now I have another 45 to go and figuring out how to, um, you know, talk to people and congregations that might be more resistant. Great, great. Yeah. Starting the conversation is always um, maybe one of the challenging first things to do. And it looks like Andrea in South Carolina um, also is thinking about that too, is how to, you know, begin some of those conversations. Um, looks like Sarah has been a Matthew 25 congregation for a while now. So thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Um and Jen says that um, sort of we're Matthew 25 church, like we signed on the dotted line, because that's what you get to do, right? You just hit that box on the website and say that you are. And then it's like, oh, well, now what do I do, right? And how do we live into this more fully? So thank you, um, Jen, for sharing that. Anyone else want to share where they're at with everything? Okay. Hey. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start us off just by showing you a few different entry points um, and the things that we have to offer and connect you to. So if you haven't been a part of one of these leader formation calls or interacted with our office area very much, one of the things that we do is we attempt to make sure that our faith formation leaders and well, really anybody's a faith formation leader, right? We all are um, in the business of forming disciples, but to make you make sure that you are connected to the resources and opportunities. Um, and we do that not just with resources and things that come from our office in particular, but from what comes from the mission agency. We kind of think of ourselves as a clearinghouse sometimes and um, have a way to connect you all to different things. So like Sheree shared, when you <laughs> go into the mission agency or the PCUSA website, you're not really sure what you're going to find. So I'm gonna go ahead and start there. Um, real quick here, I'm gonna share my screen and, um, so basically, this is where you go to um, in order to get to the main Matthew 25 um, website page. And as far as resources and whatnot go, I can kind of walk you through this piece of it, knowing that um, it's intended that there are many different entry points into the Matthew 25 initiative. And it just depends on where you're at as a congregation. So one of the first things that you're going to see is um, Reverend Dr. Diane Moffat giving you the invitation. Um, and there's a video there for that. That is about a year old or so. So some of you may or may not have used that. Um, kind of gives the overview of why there's a Matthew 25 invitation. Um, the scripture piece, Matthew 25, 31 through 46 the parable of the sheep and the goats. Um, it matters to God. It matters to Jesus, how we um, treat one another and how we especially treat those living in the margins. So there's kind of your basics of signing up and um, where to go there. Now, one of the most recent things that has um, happened that might be, this is around, yeah, six minutes long. And this is a piece that we did with Viewpoint um, for public television. And this is also um, just a great video piece that you can use, um, particularly if you're doing the entry point of what does it mean to engage in the Matthew 25 initiative. So I recommend this video piece to you. It did air on TV. It was a piece on public television. It does not air in all markets. So now we have that piece here. 
It can also be found in Korean and Spanish for the subtitles for these videos here. So um, down across on the right hand side is where you're going to see kind of all of these areas broken out. Now, the first one is the Matthew 25 Summit. And Alicia, I'll let you talk about that in just a few minutes, if you don't mind. Um, but that is the event that we're having in January. Um, there is a whole page of resources and videos, and then more about that viewpoint documentary, a map, and then we get into the focus areas. So I'm going to pull one of those up. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. Did your screen change to congregational vitality? No? Okay. No, I did not. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Otherwise, I'll go back in. <laughs> All right. How about now? We're at congregational vitality. Yes? No? It's still popping up. It hasn't come up on our screens. Hmm, interesting. Yep, it does say that it's loading. And I don't know why that would be. Try one more time. Otherwise, Janet, this is why I might have you doing all the screen shares today. Because <laughs> apparently it's not going to do it for me. While we're waiting, oh, there it is. Uh, while we're waiting for that to yes. come up, I had a question. Can you go back and see previous things? I noticed this is being recorded and I sort mm -hmm. of stumbled across this too. How do you do that? Or will oh, you yeah, absolutely. Before uh, we're done? Yes, yeah. I will. Okay. We will share that link with you and you can see the there's recordings of almost each of our months, I think, most of them. And there are um, resources for each month's topic. So we definitely have those cataloged for you. So we'll share that as well. Thank you. Um, okay, so with each of the focus areas, I'm not. I'm only gonna show you one because clearly it's an issue for it to load, but this is the Building Congregational Vitality site. Um, I would say that folks, feel safest thinking, okay, we're going to start here with Matthew 25. And it is important because it's important for your congregation and your worshiping community to know um, where they fit and how, and that they're on board to make a difference in their communities. And that's what congregational vitality is about. Um, the seven marks are listed here. Seven Marks are a part of another initiative that you can specifically be a part of, but you also can take a look at these marks um, without being a part of the Vital Congregations Initiative and just think about where do you fit in as a congregation with each of these seven marks. Um, and it talks about your commitment to forming disciples. What does it mean to be for evangelism to be? you know, in this day and age, especially in the Presbyterian world? Um, do you have a spirit-inspired worship, caring relationships, congregations with healthy systems? So there's a lot of information here around these seven marks. So we have broken down each of the focus areas into this piece here, the worship, share, act, relate, and learn, these little puzzle pieces. So when you go to each of the focus areas, you're going to see it broken down into some resources and links around worship, learning more, um, some relationship pieces and how you relate to the communities in your area. And then what are some things you can do to act and to share? So that is going to be the case with each of the priorities, each of the focus areas. And then hopefully it gives you a piece about who to contact for more information and how they might connect you. So, I um, mean, here is our Building Congregational Vitality video as well. I think um, the videos range from a minute to six or seven minutes. And there's a quite a bit of different, um, a lot of content in these videos. So I definitely invite you to look at all of the videos and that's going to be um, here on the right-hand side, this resource and videos section there. 
Um, those are a great way for your congregation to start to feel um, inspired and maybe see through other stories how they fit into the story. So you're going to see this with, um, so there's the three different focus areas and then also the intersectional priorities as we begin to build those out. There is an app, Matthew 25 app that has just gotten started as well. So you can down that, download that to your um, mobile devices. So I just wanted to give you an idea of how, if you go to the Matthew 25 um, website, what you can look at. So essentially, and I know this isn't gonna come up because of the way my screen is loading, but when you go to presbyterianmission.org, um, you'll see where you can click on Matthew 25. So a lot of times folks go to them thinking that they're going to find everything on PCUSA.org, and we're not quite there yet, where you can find most of the information about program and mission in PCUSA is the PresbyterianMission.org site. Okay. So any questions about the general logistics of finding things for Matthew 25? Are we all good there? Um, we have begun to develop some new resources, especially around children and youth and intergenerational ministries. So I wanted to show you those. I think Janet was going to share our very newest resource that I think just got loaded onto the website today. Today. I wanted to give you a piece of that. She'll share it and we'll take a look. Jenna Campbell, uh, certified educator in Oklahoma, wrote these for us and has had some really good um, programmatic pieces. So really quickly, the first, I'll share this in the chat. This is our quick sheets and resources. Um, page and so they are listed here um, under children's ministry and youth ministry as well as some of our new um, we're trying to list them where you can see the Matthew 25 resources um, so there is there is that and then just give me one second Are you guys seeing the math weaving Matthew 25? Um, what we see is the quick sheets page where it's listed, but not the actual quick sheet. Okay, that did not work. <laughs> we are having trouble sharing mm -hmm. today. Still not, is it? There it is. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> we're having trouble with things sharing. So this is the brand new one. Um, Jenna Campbell wrote, Weaving Matthew 25 through Children's Youth, Intergenerational, and Faith at Home Ministries. And as she goes through, she's coded these um, resources um, very co colorfully. So you can kind of see um, which ones might fit different um, settings. So there is that and then let me yeah I think that's a great one to um even start with yeah I think to start with and then really broken down there's also um the resource roadmap that literally just has the essentially resource list of everything that was in that quick sheet so if you're looking for just a resource list um, the Engaging Matthew 25 um, resource roadmap. And then the third one that she has is called a Pay It Forward Challenge. And this was something that she had done with the youth in her church. And so it um, lines out exactly how they did it and how to think, um, think about that for your church if you wanted to use it. I have a question because this is really yes. going fast. So 
If I go to the presbyterianmission.org, Matthew 25, can I get to this or do I have to come out to theology, formation, and evangelism? And that was going so fast, I couldn't track what you were doing. Yeah. I will share Thanks. this link in a second with the quick sheets and resources. Okay. That comes straight. So theology, formation, and evangelism, Office of Christian Formation. And then it's a sub page over here on the side, um, quick sheets and resources. But in a second, when I quit sharing my screen, I can um, put this direct link in there for you guys. And then under that, there's different categories of leadership resources, toolkits, and so okay, on. Okay, that's right. By age group and by, um, yeah. All right. I think, you. you know, eventually you can get everywhere, but it is it is very hard to find things. And we recognize that we're in a new website build. And so we try to give you as many links to get directly there as possible. So this quick sheets and resources page is virtually everything our office um, has and a good link to hold on to. So Janet will give you that link and, um, it's a good one to hold on to. And in fact, even at the very bottom of that quick sheets and resources page, there are links to some other areas and things that they're doing as well. So if you had one link, that would be the link to have. <laughs> that would be the link to come back to and you typically can find things from there. Um, the second thing to have is that for each of these um, monthly calls we do we do put together a wakelet and a wakelet is an online resource list it's a little bit like Pinterest and we um, update them as we go along too right so we have a Matthew 25 wakelet and we have a wakelet for each of our topics and then sort of a page overall page for those as well so um, this is where we can update things a whole lot quicker than we can get to on our website. Plus we can include more. So if you held on to that quick sheets and then to our wakelet link, um, that would be the easiest way to get to a lot of different pieces of information at once. Okay, especially I, because I need to ask through. a question. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm a volunteer, I'm 70 yeah. years old. I don't know what a wakelet is. Yeah. Do you want me to, would you like me to pull one up? Yeah. And show you? you know, sure. uh, I just stumbled on this. We have one pastor. We, we don't have any staff yeah. helping us. And so, you know, I'm trying to do some homework. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and you know what, Sarah, this is 60 over almost 70% of our churches are the same as yours, right? So you are in the majority at this point mostly volunteers are running our formation programs and in smaller churches. So the link that Janet put in the um, chat will go here. And there are, you can scroll side to side. And then with each column, you can scroll down. And basically everything is clickable and gives you an idea of the different resources and things that are out there. It can be super overwhelming, all of the different resources. Um, but we have found that this is a way that we can, so when we see something, we can update this. And if you have the link, you're going to see the updated resources. If I, if Janet puts something in there right now, you know, when we refresh the screen, it would show up. So that way you don't always have to have a different one. Are you able to see so, yeah. kind of how it works? Yeah. So I should just save this link so I can click on that anytime as a favorite. Yep. Yeah. I, I will say the amount of information is overwhelming. And, it is. Uh, I, and I find it frankly difficult <laughs> to mm -hmm. use. I, I have to spend an awful lot of time trying to put together a Sunday school lesson, even from um you know, the lessons, because they, they just are organized differently than my brain works. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to learn. 
I understand. Yeah. And some, and you know what, we're also available for sort of individual consulting and coaching around things like that. So if you want to take down um, my email, I'll share it in the chat. Mm -hmm. I think it can be overwhelming to have so many resources, but what's helpful is if somebody can help connect you to the ones that you're looking for and the mm -hmm. reason why you might need them. So, you know, you might be struggling to have um, a curriculum. I don't know what curriculum you're using for Sunday school, but there might be something that could be easier for a volunteer team to use. It, that you well, just haven't been aware. I'm a volunteer yeah. team of one, you know, so we're using the one that goes with the kids Bible growing in grace and gratitude or mm -hmm. whatever that one is. But, you know, um, and I've taught Sunday school on and off for 40 years to all ages of kids, but yeah, there, there really isn't something every time to give the kids to take home. And we're actually going to try something from the Methodist, uh, that uh, when I was at Presbyterian meeting on Saturday, one of the, the other biggest church, and both of us are under 200 members in the Presbytery, have found they could use because it had appropriate videos and little handouts and things to give the kids. Because when you're teaching a multi-age group Sunday school of five to 10 year olds, some of the stuff that we have in our thing are just not appropriate for for five-year-olds or right, right. it or what's appropriate for a five-year-old is going to bore a 10-year-old so yeah it's a challenging to do multi-age groups for sure I agree yeah. thank you for those questions so those are our major things just to make sure you have links to and now I want to open it up to any more questions and specific needs that you might have similar to Sarah what what can we guide you with or ask the wisdom of the group about. Anything specific on your minds today? Alicia, do you wanna just share why somebody would want to bring um, their group to the Matthew 25 summit or send somebody? So the program is a two track um, for people that are just getting on board to get information. That's the secret track. And for those that may already be deeper in doing the work. Um, and that's the amplifier track with a little bit more advanced workshops. I think it's great for people who just want more resources, tools, information, but also to meet other people. A lot of the presenters are doing the work and have been doing the work. So you get some of that hands-on expert advice and they're going to be interactional workshops. Um, I know for a fact that Kairos is coming. So I'm really excited to hear about some of the justice pieces that are coming into play. And we're also working on having some, some space for people to just explore and have some conversations across with one another about some of the challenges or questions or things that they're looking forward to learning more about or getting deeper into and hoping to continue the conversations past the summit so that there'll be some more interactive groups for people to join and some follow-up webinars that we hope to have coming. So I think it's a great opportunity. I know that worship will be streamed, but the workshops will be will not be. So that's another reason to be there so that you can get that information and content in real time and in person and not just by word of mouth from people elsewhere. Um, yeah, so those are the reasons. Great, yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, Jen, you put in the chat, asked about a confirmation program for Matthew 25. Yeah, so um, the Pre Presbyterian Outlook and Mark Hines have developed a different kind of confirmation that really was inspired by the Matthew 25 initiative. I've put the link in the chat. It is also in the Wakelet under youth. So you have it in both places. <clears throat> um, and it's changing the world confirmation for the missional church. So Mark's approach to confirmation is very different here than what we've done with um, more traditional confirmation programs, such as our Big God, Big Questions um, from Presbyterian Publishing. It's had great feedback. 
Um, and I encourage you to take a look at that. Yeah. So who is anybody here used Mark's the Outlook's um, confirmation that can share anything specific? I have heard from folks that are using it um, and have had a good experience with it. It approaches confirmation from a different direction. It's not about here is the last step in, you know, checking the membership box for a youth. It's um, not all the church history and all of that kind of knowledge. It's really about relationships and being missional. Um, but I do think um, he has a pretty good handle on what works in confirmation and what doesn't. And I think of particular interest to folks has been the um, mentor handbook that accompanies this curriculum. So I think it's a great one to take a look at. So mentors are a large part of this. And um, there's he's they've been updating it. So if you look through that link there, um, He's got some additional things that they've done. And that's, yeah, the handbook for parents and mentors. So there's a few um, testimonials on there. Um, and I know several of these people. So Lynn Turnage and Colleen Earp um, and Keith Sundberg. These are all folks, you know, Walter Brueggemann too. But, you know, I don't think he probably is running confirmation anymore. <laughs> He actually died last year, I think. Um, did he? I thought he was still writing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, no, I, I think he died because my husband's Sunday school was doing a book by his. And I think somebody, it was, it's fairly recent. I, I think he died. I he was be writing. Wrong. He was writing through. Now I'm looking. Um, no, Wikipedia still has him alive, but. Um, I know he was writing through through COVID. Um, he does write in Presbyterian publishing world. But um, yeah, so that's, thanks, Jen, for that question. I think that that confirmation program is a great one to look at. Um, even if you don't have any youth, I sometimes wonder if we shouldn't be using our confirmation um, model for, you know, new members or just an adult education program. So I would encourage anybody to take a look at that and think about how that might be your entry into how to being more of a Matthew 25 congregation. Any other questions today? And they do not have to be Matthew 25 initiative related. Something that you had hoped to specifically glean. Yes, Sarah. You said you were going to show how to get back and look at previous programs. Yes. Um, and I think Janet put that there. So it's the Faith Formation Leader Connection link. And that goes to our main page. I don't know if you can you share a screen and pull that up, Janet. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat one more time. It was up above. Can we see on my screen? Yep, it's there. So okay, this is so... the main page for Faith Formation Leader Connection. And we typically have our upcoming events above and then recordings of those. And then the monthly resource Zooms, it's pretty small on your screen, but it'll give you the um, topic. And then if you click on the links, one link is the recording of the actual what we did, and the other link is to the resources that go along with that topic. So we started with intergenerational this year. Um, we have elder and deacon training um, and adult resources, children at home. We had an open session this summer about, you know, just what helped me find whatever. Um, youth resources, we did Advent 
And then last month we were talking about training leaders and issuing invitation for serving in our ministries. And our last one of the year is this one with Matthew 25 resources. And so, so this, can... re this recording will show up um, after we do the second one, after November 28th. So probably about December 1st, you'll be able to come back and watch this recording. And then you're just putting that link again in the chat, Janet, that page. There it is. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Any other conversation you would like to have? Um, any wisdom from the group you'd like to glean? It's basically what these calls are for is we usually have some links and some information for you, but really it's about what you would like to ask about and share about too. Tiffany, hi. Hi, um, so I am just getting um, introduced to the material and just getting started, but it's something that I think is amazing that, you've de uh, that we've de developed from within a denomination. Um, I do have an interest in starting a group and I'm not really sure if my group will fall within the category of PC USA. Is that okay? Yeah. So there's a couple of different, there is a category called group. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you're thinking about a worshiping community or if you've got, um, you know, oh goodness, some of our groups, what would be an example of a group? So we have our UKIRK collegiate ministers um, and they're pretty, they can be pretty ecumenical. But mm -hmm. I, I don't, there's not any rules about who can be, um, you know, part of the Matthew 25 initiative, because the purpose is to really, you know, change lives and transform communities. So I'd love for you to share with us, though, what you're thinking about doing. Okay, um, that's great to hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually struggling because I haven't belonged to a church as a member in um, like five years or so. So uh -huh. I have first figure out which church I'm going to attend on a regular basis. Sure. But I have to see if anyone from that congregation might be interested in joining, but I have an interest in campus ministry. So okay. maybe talking to young people and seeing if they want to start a small group, maybe just like a Bible study or something at first. And, um, and I'm, I'm also wondering, like, if you would happen to be able to help me identify a, le a current leader, like who's a Sorry, someone who's <laughs> more experienced at leading this group, um, yeah. who might be kind of close to me regionally. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I um one of our partners is Ukirk Collegiate Ministries, and those are our campus ministers and campus ministries across the country. Not all of them are called Ukirk, some of them are called different things, but there's about 240 of them across the country. And so if you want to reach out um, to the email, the Christian, what is our general email? Oh, that was up here too. Um, didn't you put that in there, Janet? I thought you did. Oh, christian.formation at pcusa.org is our general email box. Christian.formation at pcusa.org. Yeah. Where are you located? Um, I'm in New York by Pennsylvania, right at the border of Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. So once we kind of take a look at a few maps, there's, um, you know, you can take a look at different congregations in the area, what the college ministry looks like in the area. If there is a UKIRK, we can look at that. And also um, the PCUSA has new worshiping communities and they meet in cafes and different buildings and in different churches and in parks and online. And so a new worshiping community might be a great connection for you too. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and are you um, someone who's experienced in this, in moderating or in leading these groups? Leading groups as in like teaching a workshop or leading a group? I'm not a campus minister, so I'm a Christian educator, so I've led lots of different kinds of things in our office. We have um, Christian educators that have led lots of different sorts of groups and um, 
taught workshops and things like that. But whether we can do it for you or sort of connect you with someone, we'll be happy to explore what that looks like together. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks so much for the info. You're welcome. Yeah, look forward to hearing from you. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, so uh, I, did I hear you say you're not going to meet in December? So in January, will this still be on the second Thursday or the fourth so, Tuesday? Or? Yeah, thanks for asking. We're looking at revamping how we're going to do this next year. So stay tuned um, to that page and it should pop up. I don't believe that we'll probably meet in early January as we're getting ready so the Association of Partners in Christian Education meets in January every year, and that's kind of our big event, our big conference in St. Louis. So we're typically focused on that um, at the very beginning of the year, and then we return to regular programming. So. so so, what page am I supposed to watch? I mean, I've got so many. <laughs> that Leader Connection page. Leader Connection. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. We also have a quarterly e-blast newsletter resource list, and you're welcome to su subscribe to that. Um, and that comes out once a quarter and will give you an idea of upcoming events, upcoming trainings. Um, we offer cohorts and gives you different um, resources and things that are being released. So that's another way that we interact with um leaders across the denomination is through that newsletter and it's once a quarter so our no I will say that our November one went out I don't know two days ago right so the next one won't be until when Janet February yep Stephanie Yes. I'll just mention briefly and I'll put my email in the chat. I don't so that you all don't have to have another link. So I'll just put my email up there. Um, if you're interested in conversations with other ministry leaders, you define yourself as a ministry leader. I do not. So you can be any person and still be a ministry leader, in my opinion. Um, but if you're interested in Matthew 25 and more specifically vital congregations or eradicating poverty, those specific foci. We have those continued conversations that are ongoing. They meet weekly, bi-weekly, depending on which one. And if either one of those is of interest, you can go ahead and send me an email and I will give you the Zoom link so that you can hop in and see if it's for you, how it's for you. Um, when we have speakers, we record here lately, um, like today, and we had Andrew Bartlett came and talked about measuring outcomes um, for eradicating poverty. So there's some additional, look, just to make your plate so full, there's additional resources and links there that come up just from other leaders that are shared as well. But there we get to go a little deeper um, and invite people in to have conversations with us around whatever you want to, much like this part of the conversation here. Thanks, Alicia. Appreciate it. Bye. All right, folks. Well, you're welcome to stay on if you thought of a question or something that you'd like to ask, but um, I will give you back some time today if everybody's gotten their plate full enough. <laughs> um, but we um, appreciate you coming today. We know that this is the beginning of quite the busy season um, as you head into the Advent and holiday seasons and um, think about you and your ministries and pray for you and your ministries, all faith formation leaders, as you walk into this time. And um, we are grateful for the work that you do. That is why we exist here is to best equip, inspire, connect you, um, and it is a joy to serve you all in this way. So blessings be with you on your ministries.